In the last few videos, we've been really focusing on how to distinguish E1 from E2, from SN1, from SN2. This is all really complicated information. But we started talking about looking at the structure of the substrate, the molecule that has the leaving group. Different types of substrates are only capable of doing different types of mechanisms. With the exception of the secondary alkyl halides, the substrates are only capable of doing one or two or three of the different mechanisms. We also talked about the role of the reagent, the nucleophile or the base. We looked at what it means to be a strong nucleophile and a strong base, a strong nucleophile that's a weak base, etc. It gave you a list of different types of nucleophiles and bases, and we talked about which mechanism these different re reagents preferred. Putting all that information together, we were able to say, for example, if you have a primary substrate reacting with a strong base that's also a weak nucleophile, you're looking at the E2 reaction. Or if you have a secondary substrate that's reacting with a strong nucleophile that's also a strong base, you're going to simultaneously do SN1 and E2. So this information is kind of like a cheat sheet to help you correctly predict the products of these substitution and elimination reactions. Now, once you've narrowed down your mechanism, let's say you decide that you're going to do SN2 and E2, and your brain is pretty overwhelmed because that probably took a lot of mental effort just to get to that part, now you have to follow through and actually draw the product of the SN2 reaction and draw the products of the E2 reaction. And so let's do one more summary cheat sheet sort of a thing to help you remember the different types of products that are formed in each of these four mechanisms. And let's start with E1. So E1, remember this is elimination with one molecule falling apart at the first step when we're forming a carbocation. Uh, and that carbocation might undergo rearrangement. So let's start by making a note that we need to look out for carbocation rearrangement. But in general, aside from worrying about carbocation rearrangement, the E1 mechanism is pretty straightforward. Our major product will be our SATE-CEF product, which is the most substituted alkene, and also our major product will be the trans product. So first, first on the importance is looking for the most substituted alkene, and then once you have found the most substituted alkene, if you can put it into a trans um, configuration, then that is going to be your major product. And that's really all you need to think about with E1. E2 is a little bit trickier. For um, the E2 reaction, remember, we might need to worry about anticoplanar. So check to see if you need to deal with anticoplanar. That's going to apply if you're doing elimination between two chiral carbons or if you're dealing with elimination within a ring. You don't always have to worry about anticoplanar configuration. For the E2 reaction, the major product depends on the type of base that we are using. So if we have the bulky base, which is tert butoxide, OCCH33, the major product in that case will be our Hoffman product, which is our least substituted alkene. And if we have any other base, anything other than tert butoxide, our major product will be the SATE-CEF product. Now remember, this is um, major, meaning that we do make the other products as well. This is just going to be the major product. And then whether we're making the um, Hoffman or the SATE-CEF product, so always, regardless, the major product is trans unless 
we are dealing with an anticoplanar situation, which is going to force the formation of either the Z or the E stereoisomer. For SN1, if we are doing the SN1 reaction, so this is substitution where our leaving group falls off of the molecule, we do have to, again, look out for rearrangement of our carbocation. The nucleophile in the SN1 reaction will always attach or bond to the finished product of the carbocation rearrangement. The products of the reaction, if, if a chiral carbon is formed, when the nucleophile attaches, we will get a racemic mixture of products. 50% R and 50% S. But that's only if we make a chiral carbon when we attach our nucleophile. For the SN2 reaction, this is where the nucleophile attacks the carbon as the leaving group is falling off. So we don't have any rearrangement. The nucleophile is going to attach itself to the carbon that was holding the leaving group every single time. And if we make a chiral carbon, when that uh, nucleophile attaches itself, the product has inverted stereochemistry from whatever type of stereochemistry the, the reactant had. So if the reactant was an S, then the product will be an R or vice versa. So with all of this information together, you should be able to navigate elimination and substitution reactions without too much difficulty.